nearly $60,000 of debt since I started my debt-free journey about two years ago with $108,000 of debt. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use every single dollar to go towards my goal of becoming debt-free one day. And I hope to encourage you to create your budget so that you can also meet your financial goals so you can live your best financial life. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. I'm going to walk you step by step through my November budget using my real numbers as a millennial who doesn't make a lot of money currently so that you can see how I'm getting closer to my goal of becoming debt free. And I hope that you will pull out your own spreadsheets or your pen and paper or whatever you use to budget so that we can both get in control of our income so that we are able to meet our financial goals and live our best financial life. So if you're ready to get started, I'm gonna get started right now. The first thing I do when I'm creating my budget for the month is plan out the income that I expect to receive throughout the month. And so for this month, I plan to receive income through four different sources. Two of those sources are through me being an employee, and then the last two sources are through self-income or self-employed income. And so the first two employee type of income come from me being an adjunct professor. So as you may know, I teach at two different universities. And so from one of the universities, I get paid on a bi-weekly basis. And then the other university pays me on a monthly basis. So I get paid on the last business day of the month. Then my self-employment sources of income are through YouTube. So through your generosity, I'm able to bring in money through YouTube. So every time you watch my videos, I'm able to earn some money. And that money goes a long way towards helping me meet my financial goals. And then the other self-employment source of income that I have is through Instacart. So typically, whenever someone uses my referral bonus to sign up as an Instacart shopper, once they complete a few batches, then they're able to not only earn themselves a bonus, but also earn me a bonus. And I've actually been seeing bonuses of worth of $2,000 recently. But I do know that I'll be paid out a bonus for this week actually that will be $500 so I'm bringing in my income through those four different sources so my total income for the month is $2,267 after taxes so that's after accounting for the taxes that I need to pay through my self-employment sources of income if you're wondering what spreadsheet I am using to create my budget, you can actually get your hands on this same spreadsheet because I created this spreadsheet and it's available for you to have. And so I use this spreadsheet and the great thing about it is that it not only tallies my income but also accounts for my self-employment income. And so I'm able to figure out how much money I need to be saving and then how much money I have to be able to work with afterwards. So if you're interested in using this same spreadsheet to do your budget, you can get it now and the link will be in the description box. And also I'll put the link in the comment section as well. And if I can, I'll link it up here too in the cards. So the next thing I do is I start to plan out my expenses for the month. And usually I have my expenses broken out into major categories. So some of the major categories are like giving, housing, transportation, insurance, and debt, and all of those different categories. And then under each category, I'll put out the, or I'll itemize the different expenses for the month. And so we're gonna first start off with the category of giving. That's the first thing that I do with my income. And so for giving, I usually tithe to my church and I tithe 10% of my after-tax income. And so that will be about 200. So the next category that I have in my budget is related to housing. So technically the item that I have under the housing category isn't 
really housing is storage because you might know that a few months ago I actually moved out of my apartment and then I moved in with my boyfriend but that left me with a lot of my personal items that I didn't have space for and so I have a storage unit in Atlanta that has all of my items and so I consider that my housing expense now that I don't actually pay rent and so my rent on my storage unit is about $84 every single month and so that's my only housing expense now the next category is for utilities so there are many things that fall in under utilities but as of right now the only utility that I pay is my phone bill and so my phone bill is a $78 I have T-Mobile I get a lot of questions about that I have T-Mobile service that is on a family plan where I'm the account holder but I also just recently bought the iPhone 11 Pro so a part of that bill is not only just the service but also my installment plan for the phone so the installment plan on the phone is about $40 and then the rest of the money is the plan or my portion of the plan which is about $29 so that comes out to the $78 that I pay T-Mobile every single month for my phone the next category and my budget is related to food so food is typically the expense that a lot of people struggle with and it's something that I've been able to not only get down over time but fortunately since I've moved in with my boyfriend that's actually an expense that he decided that he would take on but I do put money into my budget for food because I need to have money for food if I ever you know I'm out and about out of town or if I just want to run into Publix and grab something real quick I don't want to necessarily rely on waiting on him to you know provide me money for that so I do put money aside in my budget for food and I put about a hundred dollars a month for food and that will for this month I know will cover like I said any runs to the grocery store but also when I go to Atlanta um, in two weeks because I have a job interview in Atlanta and so while I'm there I'm probably going to need to eat <laughs> because my job interview is around lunchtime and so I know I will be starving <laughs> but once I leave that job interview and before I hit the road I'm going to need to grab something to eat so for times like that that's what the $100 for the month is used for anything any type of food purchase that I make transportation is the next category in my budget so for this month, I'm going to be spending about $250 on transportation and $50 is going to go towards gas because I don't drive around that much now that I live in Columbus, Georgia. But I do need to account for filling my tank up when I go to Atlanta in a couple weeks. And so that should be sufficient. And then when it comes to maintenance for my car, I'm going to have to spend about $200 on maintenance and that's just a estimate and so one of the things that I do in order to figure out how much money I might need to spend on maintenance is I keep all the maintenance receipts from the past I keep them in the glove compartment of my car and so that way if I've already had a service done and I need to have that similar type of service done again I'm able to go to the receipts and then estimate how much money I'll have to spend on that so what I did was um, I looked up how much it would cost for an oil change and then I also need to get the brake fluid change in my car and also my brakes. There are also a few other things that I need to get changed like the transmission fluid but if I were to do that and also cabin filter and air filter that will run me up to $600 and it's not an expense that I see as a major um, or urgent need right now so I decided to only go with the oil change and the brake maintenance and so based off of that I estimate to spend about $200 this month in car maintenance the next category in my budget is insurance so for me the only insurance that I pay is auto insurance and typically I do pay my insurance um, at the six month mark so that I'm able to pay a large portion of the premium and then able to I'm able to get a discount and so I actually did just pay my premium in October and so the money that you see here is actually just the I guess the monthly portion of the six month premium I put that in a sinking fund so that way when the six month mark comes about I'm not scrambling and looking for $900 instead I have $900 already set aside and earmarked for my auto insurance 
And so if you want to learn a little bit more about Sinky Funds, I have a video here so that you can check them out. And it's a really great tool. It's going to save you a lot of stress. And also save you some money too when you really think about it just by having sinking funds in place. And so that's what I do for my auto insurance. So the expenses that fall under the personal category are my toiletries and clothing. Those are the expenses that I plan to pay out for this month. And I can't really say pay out. Some of it is once again a sinking fund. So like for my toiletries, I actually don't need any toiletries that I can see right now. I might need to buy some shampoo and conditioner, but we might also be able to get through the whole month. But what I do is I just put about $25 a month in a sinking fund. So if I do need to buy shampoo or whatever else, deodorant, lotion, or whatever I need, I have the money set aside for that. And then for clothing, I don't typically buy clothing, <laughs> but the weather is changing and there might be a few items that I might need to purchase. Like I already know that I need to buy some wool socks. I do already have wool socks, but they're like hidden somewhere in my storage unit. I don't know where they are. And so it's just going to be a lot easier for me to run up to Sam's Club where I do buy my wool socks. I feel like they have the best wool socks. But anyway, I run up to Sam's Club and then buy a pack of wool socks for, I don't know, five dollars and so that's something you know that i plan to buy and who knows what else i might need to buy due to the weather changing so i'm just putting a little bit of money aside for that and i also think i want to get a new um shirt to wear on my interview that i have i have one shirt but i just want a different kind and this might not be a necessary purchase and it also might not be a purchase that I end up buying, depending on what I see out there. But it's just something I've been thinking about. So I have money aside for clothing if I do want to buy any clothing in this month. Now, my largest expense for the month will come from the debt category. So I have student loans. That's my last debt, my only debt that I have. And I owe about $54,000 on my student loans loans and so last month I did a video about my student loans talking about how I was able to get a zero dollar payment due to the income driven repayment program and so if you're interested in checking that out check it out here at the link above so I do have a zero dollar a month payment but I decided and I talked about it a little bit in that video that I'm going to pay the interest that accrues on my student loans every single month because if I don't pay the interest that accrues on my student loans every single month, I will end up owing a lot more money due to interest capitalization or a the you know just the interest just stacking on every single month you know and so i want to make sure that i pay the least amount of money possible and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pay the interest now last month by just letting the interest stack up day by day week by week i end up paying about 450 dollars in interest for the month and so what I'm going to try to do is pay the interest on a weekly basis. So every single week, I'm going to go into my loan, uh, my loan provider website, and I'm going to pay whatever interest accrues for that week. And actually, I'm remembering now that I was supposed to be trying to see how much money accrues day by day, so that I also have a good idea of that, but I've already failed for the week. Actually, no, I haven't yet. So I'm going to do that. That's going to be a little experiment for me. So I'm going to go in today and see how much money I accrue in interest every single day. But I'm going to try and stay on top of the interest on a week by week basis. So that way I'm able to spend even less money on interest overall. So my estimate is that I will pay about $275 for the month. But we'll see that number might need to be a little bit more in order to keep my principal at the starting principal that I had once I went into repayment. So that's the goal. Pay on my interest every single week and hopefully that will be no more than $275. Based off of all of those expenses, my total expenditure for the month will be $1,289. So that is less than the money that I plan to bring in for the month. So that means I'll have a extra pot of money that I can use for a number of reasons. I haven't really decided what that will be. So here are my thoughts. So one, I can either decide to start contributing to my IRA again. 
So if you recall from last year's goals video, my goal was to max out my IRA to the full contribution limit of 2019, which is $6,000. I think I was only able to save up about $3,000 so far because I stopped contributing money in about June. And so I could decide to pick that back up if I wanted to. The other thing that I could do with the money is to pay more money towards my student loan. I think that's going to be the least likely situation because I've already met the maximum for um, interest that can be deducted from your taxes for the year. And there's no real rush yet, especially since I'm not making like a full time income yet. Um, to pay down my student loans any more than just the interest right now. So that's probably going to be the least likely scenario unless one day I'm just like, I want to get rid of this debt and I want to do that. Now the next option could be using the money towards moving. And so I have two jobs right now that I'm in the running for, one that will be out of state and then one that is in Atlanta. And so I um, Obviously, no matter where I move to, it's going to cost some money, but definitely if I move out of state, there's going to be a lot more money that I need to contribute. So I might just want to keep that money just to see what happens with the interviews that I have over this week and in the next two weeks because those are kind of like the final interviews and then I will hear what happens from those. So that's my thought process on what to do with the remaining money but I haven't decided yet exactly what I'm gonna do and so I'm just gonna save it for now <laughs> so that's the money that I plan to earn in the month of November and you can see exactly what I'm doing with that money over the month and you've also seen that most of the money that I'm earning is going towards my student loan debt to ensure that I'm not paying any more money and in interest than I have to and that is going to eventually help me towards my goal of becoming debt free. So if you are interested in creating your budget and you want to learn more on how to do that, I have a video that walks you step by step how to create a budget and you'll want to check that video out right here. But if you also want some of my budgeting tools and if you want to use the same spreadsheet that I use, you'll check that out at the link below here. But I hope that you are subscribed and you hit the notification bell so that you can learn about more information that I put out on tips and tricks on how to budget in the future. Thanks for watching.